An open reduction internal fixation of intraarticular calcaneal fractures with the calcaneal locking plate. The radiographs show the intraarticular fracture of the posterior facet and the cuboidal facet of the calcaneus in the lateral and axial view, in the dorsal plantar view, and in the Broden projections. The coronal CT scan shows the involvement of an intermediate fragment of the posterior facet. And there's an additional displaced fracture of the anterior facet. The axial view shows the severe destruction of the cuboidal facet of the calcaneus. Because three joints are involved, this fracture is classified as a B3 fracture. The patient is placed in the lateral decubitus position. The calcaneal locking plate is available in steel and titanium. It can be used with any combination of 2.7 and 3.5 millimeters self-tapping cortex screws with 2.7 and 3.5 millimeters self-tapping locking head screws. In this exercise, the 3.5 millimeter cortex screw is used. Therefore, the 2.5 and 3.5 millimeter drills, the 3.5, 2.5 double drill guide, the depth gauge, and the small hexagonal screwdriver are required. The 3.5 millimeter locking head screws need the LCP drill guide, the 2.8 millimeter drill, the depth gauge, the screwdriver shaft, the torque limiter, and the handle. On the foam model, the lateral malleolus and the base of the fifth metatarsal are palpated and marked. The extended lateral incision runs vertically close to the Achilles tendon. It turns distally at the level of the base of the fifth metatarsal. The sural nerve and the peroneal tendon are always within this one layer flap which is incised and prepared like a fasciocutaneous flap. The incision goes straight down to the bone. Distally, care is taken to avoid the peroneal tendons. The calcaneal fibular ligament is detached from the bone and the flap is lifted by dissecting epiperiosteally. so that the sub tailor joint is gently exposed. Three two millimeter K wires are inserted close to the joint and into the talus. The medial section of the posterior facet, which is a part of the sustentacular fragment, has to be exposed first to check if there's any tilting or displacement in relation to the tailor facet. The displacement of the posterior facet fragment is evaluated as well as the dislocation of the anterior process fragment in the area of the primary fracture line, according to Essex Lopresti. Now the intraarticular displacement of the anterior facet fragment is evaluated. The first reduction and fixation are done for the medial part of the posterior facet by fixing this fragment so that it is absolutely flush to the talus using a two millimeter K wire coming from the medial part of the planta pedis. In the second step, the posterior facet fragment is reduced congruently to the talus and the medial part of the posterior facet of the calcaneus and fixed temporarily with two two millimeter K wires. There must be no gap left posteriorly before the second K wire is positioned, also close to the sub tailor joint. In the third step, a stab incision is made over the dorsal tuberosity fragment to insert a cancellous shunt screw. The 3.5 millimeter drill is used to pre-drill using the appropriate sleeve.
The shunt screw with handle helps to correct the varus valgus malposition of the tuberosity or its dorsocranial dislocation. After anatomic reduction of the tuberosity fragment, it is temporarily fixed with two K wires from dorsoplantar towards the subtalar bone block or the talus. The fourth step now is taken by reducing the anterior process fragment towards the anterior facet fragment to realign the cuboidal joint facet. The two fragments are fixed temporarily with two two millimeter K wires. Before fixation with the second K wire, the joint surface has to be checked for anatomic reduction. To hold the anterior process correctly in an anatomically reduced position, another K wire has to be placed from posterior fixing the tuberosity fragment with the anterior process fragment towards the cuboid. As the fifth step, the calcaneal locking plate is prepared for internal fixation. It must be decided if the first hole should be cut off and how the superior and inferior tabs and the subthalamic arm should be pre-bent. The cutting pliers with positioning pin are used to smoothly cut the first hole. In other cases, this hole can be used to hold an avulsed fragment of the anterior process in position. Two threaded bending pins are used to contour the subthalamic arm. The tabs are bent with the bending pliers. The two plate holes close to the calcaneo-cuboidal joint are bent for positioning of the plate towards the calcaneus. One of these holes is slid over the K-wire to avoid the K-wire hindering the plate positioning. The shunt screw is removed. The first subthalamic 3.5 millimeter hole is drilled in the posterior facet fragment almost parallel to the subtalar joint. The hole may ascend not more than 5 degrees and run 10 degrees anteriorly to hit the sustentacular fragment. Usually this first screw is the only one which is inserted as a compression screw. If a locking head screw were used first, a gap could be left. The whole length is drilled with the 2.5 millimeter drill. If the sustentaculum has been accurately targeted, the length is measured. Most often it's 45 to 50 millimeters. The 3.5 millimeter cortex screw is inserted. Now the plate can be bent precisely while in position using the two bending pins in the tuberosity arm. To insert the locking head screw, the LCP drill guide is screwed into the plantar hole of the tuberosity. The 2.8 millimeter drill is used. After the length is measured, a 3.5 millimeter locking head screw is inserted with the torque limiter. The procedure is repeated for the second locking head screw in the tuberosity fragment. The K wire is removed 
and a second subthalamic screw is inserted. After the fine contouring of the plate, two screws are placed close to the calcaneocuboidal joint. As an option, the first screw can also be a 3.5 millimeter compression screw. In small calcaneal bones, 2.7 millimeter screws can be used instead of 3.5 millimeter screws. All transfixating K wires are now removed and the subtalar and calcaneocuboidal joints are checked for anatomic congruency. In total, six screws are used, two subthalamic, two dorsal, and two close to the calcaneocuboidal joint where the grip of the bone usually is the best. The superior tab keeps the anterior process fragment down. The last check in practice is done with intraoperative x-ray control and open arthroscopy. In the exercise, the calcaneus is taken out and the joints are checked for congruency in this B2 fracture model. The intraoperative x-rays show in the clinical B3 case anatomic reduction using a titanium plate and screws. A postoperative CT scan can be performed to verify anatomic open reduction and internal fixation.